sometimes it's a good place to be. But as a youth, you especially for entrepreneur youth, right? You need a I call it opportunity. Although most people see that Kelantan is a very low down or like low economic state, but actually I am very happy here. And every time I come home, I feel so at peace. The development in Kelantan at the moment is the way it should be. But however, as a teenager, I would like further development in the future. You know, as for career-wise, I would like opportunities to come so that we can, you know, further develop in Kelantan and not go uh, somewhere else. Somewhere else. Uh, I hope to have a. Uh, uh, more uh, investments and uh, business opportunities in Kelantan. We hope to have more uh, trustworthy, sincere politician, uh, energetic and uh, uh, clean. My political candidate, I like a very, very peaceful person. For me, ideal political candidate is, is, is simple. Let's talk more action. The person must be really religious so people can look up to and must be really uh, you know, get in touch with the citizens so you know what the problems are. A leader who can hear our voices and can make uh, good changes. Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. This is Vantage Point PRU. We are here in Kota Baru, Kelantan and behind us, yes you guessed it right, is the South China Sea. This is Perdana Resort along Pantai Cahaya Bulan. I'm Nadia Azmi and this is Cynthia Ng. And yes indeed, it's a lovely day here by the beach and I'm joined by three young smart ladies. I would like to uh, introduce my first guest. Is on my far left is uh, Nur Faizal Misma. She's an academic executive at the Darul Naim College of Technology and next to her we have Amy Jeta Ismail. She she is Managing Director at Muni Millennia, a car dealership company. And, and this is Shamimi, Shamimi Saifuddin, just 23 years old. She's a young entrepreneur and currently runs a family business. She has a spa in Kota Baru, in fact. So now, when we think about Kelantan, we see it as somewhat a more conservative and traditional state as compared to the other places in Malaysia. Um, especially for those who have never stepped foot in Kelantan, uh, it's seen as a very mysterious state, uh, often associated with nasi krabu, nasi dagang, but I'm sure there's more than that beyond that. You know, with all its do's and don'ts, people have uh, certain perceptions about uh, Kelantan. And Kelantan, it has been dubbed as the Malay heartland and also the cradle of Malay culture, mainly because uh, most of the people in Kelantan, 93% to be exact, are Malay. Okay, now, it's a state with, I believe, with many potential, yeah. right, Cynthia? We've seen many young, talented individuals from Kelantan. You know, you have many uh, handsome young footballers who are Kelantanese, uh, young professionals who are from Kelantan. And now, what we really want to know, with the election coming up soon around the corner, what do these, do these youth in Kelantan want? Are they excited about the election? What are their expectations? In Kelantan alone, there is an estimated of about more than 400,000 young voters out of a population of more than 1.5 million in this state alone. So let's unravel uh, bit by bit uh, to get an insight about the youth in Kelantan. Okay, I'm going to start out with Shamimi. Shamimi, you were born in Kelantan, raised here, you had a childhood in Kelantan. So describe a little bit to us about the youth in Kelantan. Okay. Um, Assalamualaikum. Um, actually, first of all, I would like to thank to Astra Wani for giving me this yeah, opportunity no. yeah, to share my experience and opinion. Okay, about youth in Kelantan, actually, based on my experience, I've been um, study outside. Okay, they are they have the youth out there. They have misconception towards uh, youth in Kelantan actually, because they feel that we are low it's like this low class yeah, okay mm -hmm. and then so i think actually our lifestyle nowadays already improved okay. so there are lots of educated uh, youth uh, already so Indeed, that there are three really young yes, smart women yeah. today uh -huh. and i'd like to go to our Faiza. you teach students i mean college students yeah. and mm -hmm. when you speak to them and you organize activities what are some of their concerns i mean when they when, when you speak to them i mean what are some of the activities that they that they are uh, that they want that they need i think um Young people, like in education, we want to develop their character. Yes. To become the best of what they can be. Mm -hmm. But sometimes uh, the school education doesn't teach that. They teach um, curriculum, right? So um, their concern is to have uh, an aim in life. Like in our college, we accept students that are not excellent, that not that excellent in, in SPM. 
but then uh, we developed it to be a, a better person. So particularly uh, I, from a perspective of a student, yeah. of a young student still in college in Kelantan, how do they find the lifestyle here? It's very relaxing. It's very suitable for studying. And they like it. They like it. Because uh, it's very convenient. Like you can go everywhere and it's very near. Like I, um, it's not that far from the college itself. Yeah. So, uh, how would you describe the youth in Kelantan? Um, well, uh, there's a lot of uh, local activity here that Kelantan teenagers can explore. Um, it's about, it's just they need some um, exposure. Yes, to okay. Them. Exposure to them, like at the society that. You know, local traditional playing like gassing. So when gassing. you say exposure, do you yeah. think the youth in Kelantan they are getting that exposure, the the access to the information and education that they need to do what they want? Okay, we were mentioning about job opportunities. We were in Sabah and Sarawak, and one of the main issue for them is not having attractive jobs in their respective states, and that is why they migrate. And Kelantan has the highest number of migration among youths, especially to KL, to uh, to to Singapore, to Penang, to look for better work. But uh, both of you here, I mean, you have, been, you have studied outside and then you choose to come back to work here, right? So what is your take on that? First of all, yeah, I've worked in KL before mm -hmm. and for two years and then I came back to do automobile business yeah. and mm -hmm. also I was, I, I was graduated in architecture before and mm -hmm. I see that uh, architecture in Kelantan is uh, slower than other states. Okay. Yeah. So I just like to make some new ideas for them. Shamimi, you're in the health and a beauty industry, yes. but also we know that Kelantan is rich in its cultural elements. Yeah. You know, its handicraft, yes. its batik industry, mm. and um, tourists they come here for that. Mm. Okay, but maybe perhaps we could see a better boost in uh, this field for it to become more developed and progressed so that it's more known in the eyes of the world. Um, do you agree? Yes, I agree. Actually, for the handicraft and like food traditional, it, it comes from rural areas. Yeah, uh, government give them support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come up with like teman, teminum makanan negara. Uh -huh. uh, just they develop teman just for to market the rural areas um, products. Okay, uh, so do you see? Me. So yeah, Faisal, I think uh, you're wanting to say something. Can I just say something related to the work opportunities? I yes. think it's not because there's not many. It's just that it's not being explored, mm -hmm. as well as the culture, the traditional industry is not being yeah. marketed that, uh, as well as other things. Okay, we will really, find out yeah. what are some of the areas that you'd want. What kind of development do they want here? But I think Nadia, we have to go for the yeah. First we'll go for break. a break uh, for a while. So we'll be back right after this. Okay, welcome back. And earlier just now, Faisal, we were talking about exposure, job opportunities, and this is one of the main concerns of young Kelantanese. Is this true? What areas do we want to see to be more developed in this state? I think um, since um, Kelantan is uh, famous for its business, mm -hmm. especially the, tra tra the traditional business, I think that, that needs to be exposed and developed. Because that, that itself is an opportunity, which we don't really find in other, in other states, yeah. or very little. So the when you say developed, um, do you think that there should be more development in, you know, in the industry, the exposure? How do you think it can be improved so that these students are aware of how they can utilize these resources that they have in Kelantan and generate Kelantan's economy and progress also as an individual? Mm. What can be improved? I think um, the Kelantanese youth, like, they have to come back mm -hmm. and develop it themselves. I mean, we need them. Like, okay. That question yourself, okay, how do you attract the youth so that the human capital stay in the state? I mean, you've been working with youth around, right? Yeah. So what do they say to you? Yeah, to create that awareness, you know, come back. It's okay, you still can have a life here. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to KL or Penang. You can do what you want here just as much as you can if you were to be outside of the state. So how, maybe, maybe Amy, Amy. Amy. or Amy, uh, Shamimi. Okay, Shamimi. From, from my opinion, we know that Kelantan is, uh, we, our cost of living here is lower mm -hmm. than KL. Yes. So why don't they come back here and then have a work here, doing business, so that I think it is more giving them benefits. 
So you have friends. Uh, do you have friends in going out of uh, to yes, KL? Yes, I have. Yes, so I what have. do you see would be the main factor for them to be so attracted to that city life? What is it that makes them say, okay. I'm going to leave Kelantan and I'm going to find a job? Okay, frankly here. speaking, youth, they are more focusing on entertainment. Mm -hmm. So Kelantan, there's, there's no entertainment. So they move on to KL just mm -hmm. for cinemas, karaoke and so on. Entertainment? So None in Kelantan, do you agree, Amy? Mm, not really. <laughs> what? Entertainment, yeah. Yes. But no. not that city of life, kind of like oh. entertainment. So mm -hmm. usually, you, you youngsters in Kelantan, what do you guys usually do to, you know, take up in your spare, for your spare time as a hobby? What do you guys um, usually do? Well, um, that's walk off to at night. <laughs> and then also, we have a nice beach here. Okay. I, there, I love there's it. one thing about yeah. Kelantan is that I find really unique is uh, the spirit of entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. especially women. Women is, I would say that when I went to uh, places like the stalls and uh, Pasas, uh, Pasas Siti, Siti Gadija, all of them are women and they are the driving force behind the economy of uh, Kelanta, especially yes. small businesses. Yeah. And both of you are uh, young entrepreneurs, oh, young entrepreneurs in yourself. the commercial side. And how does understand this, this women empower thing in Kelantan? Um, Emmy? Um, I myself, my, my siblings are all uh, ladies mm -hmm. and one one man one um, my brother one yes. of my brother and then most all my siblings uh, is in automobile industry too and and like you said um, most of the mechanics are, are guys there's no women mechanics mm -hmm. of course but mm -hmm. they move uh, most most of them work in the office area okay. so the men uh, usually do mechanics like all those hard works hardwood stuff that women can do so it's okay. like divided between two two types of genders okay yeah speaking about like you know uh, that's probably like a tradition in, in yes. Kelantan um, what about the tradition because you both run family businesses yes. so it's like uh, another tradition that you inherit the business from your parents that you yeah. will take over the company and all that yeah. but today with the changing times mm -hmm. with the outbreak of uh, Facebook and Twitter and blogs uh, the yeah. youth today they're getting more and more input and ideas yeah. from all sorts of sources mm -hmm. and um, they're somewhat forming their own opinions forming their own standings yeah. you know and all that so do you think that this tradition will still keep going on or will the times now the modern times change this tradition what do you think yeah. as maybe i'll ask shamimi okay from my opinion for me i do state stated in my what am i doing now yeah but then uh, i have my own idea yeah, so right. i just can expand my business and mm -hmm. just not stated just to one business only so i may be doing uh, something related so I just expand the business. With Do you feel that I'm doing because now. you're a Kelantanese in Kelantan yes. that you are restricted to doing business? Because business here is such, um, there's such diverse opportunities in um, entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and all that. Do you feel that you're restricted to do just that, that you don't have any chance to do anything else? Do you feel that way? No, I don't feel that way. Because I do have support from my parents, from my mother. They mm -hmm. are all sporting. So I can do my, I do have my personal life. Okay, with friends, also the okay, general election is coming soon, 13th general election, and I'll talk a bit about politics and the language of politics now is economy. And for youth, economy well-being, job opportunities, being able to buy houses, being able to buy cars, these are the main things that concern them. And looking at the young people, I mean Kelantan, there is a perceived thinking that there is still a slower speed of growth in Kelantan. Is this true and how does it affect the younger votes? What do you think, Faisal? I think um, in terms of um, income, Mm -hmm. uh, as uh, Shamimi said, the living expenses is very low here. So we don't actually we don't have the same problem as those in KL. Like we can save more money and and maybe earn more money. So if we can't buy a house, we'll build a house. <laughs> you see, okay. see, you get what I mean? Like yes. if we do we don't have a job, we'll create a job. That's okay. the, so it's, that's what's special about Kelantan. Mm -hmm. The younger generation are being uh, given the opportunity to be to be progressive not being in the normal market of, uh, you know, uh, uh, going to makan gaji kind of yes. uh, work. Now that we're talking about election, uh, we know that Kelantan has been run by the same administration for 21 years now. So we'll see what's your take on this, but we have to go for another commercial break. So we'll elaborate more on that after this.
Welcome back on Vantage Point PRU. Now, before the commercial break, we were just talking about the youth and politics. So, I was saying that Kelantan is a state that has been run by the same administration for 21 years, if I'm uh, correct. And its people have become somewhat fused and synonymous with the current governance. So, I'm going to ask Amy, what's your take on this? Um, well, it's uh, 21 years. Yeah, that's a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we, what, as a youth, I... I want somebody who who is look clean, but yeah. also look clean to the to look the clean public. Clean physically, <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. physically, and um, of course have the relationship to the youth, so we can speak out our opinion and give us our chance, new chance to us in business mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. new um, education facilities to us. Okay, yeah. so Faiza. When we talk about I the ideal political candidate, okay, maybe there are two things that we can uh, take into consideration. Perhaps the youth today, especially, are they more concerned on you know the characteristic of the uh, candidate, of the leader, of the background of the leader, or is it more of what he or she can contribute, how he or she can make a change? Which one are they more concerned about here in Kelantan? I think it's the leader. Um, they want, of course, it's much more convenient to have somebody younger who understands it's better. Mm -hmm. But then um, what's important is what's the change that's going to come. Okay. That, that's what they have to highlight mm -hmm. to us. When we uh, talk about quality of candidates, it is understood that religion is at the forefront. It's, it's indeed the heartbeat of the political scene and the community here in Kelantan. Now, I'm trying to understand the psychography of young voters. What kind of leadership does the young people want? Do they want somebody who still embrace, I mean, embraces the values, the cultures of the true Kelantanis at the same time? Perhaps somebody who is more progressive, who is more maybe business friendly. What do you think, maybe? Okay, for me, I do think that we need some changes in Kelantan. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need uh, the candidate to be more aggressive in um, prepared for us a good job opportunity in, in Kelantan actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so what kind of engagement do you want to see? You know, all these politicians with the youth. Um, engagement. Uh, I mean, you know, to to do uh, bond with the youth. If to I was actually talking to some know. Japanese yesterday, yes. they said, "I want somebody to play futsal with me." I mean, I want to carry the play because I'm just Yeah, we need uh, someone who can understand us, uh, hear our voice. Okay, do some changes in Kelantan. Okay to prepare mm -hmm. us with um, maybe some training or just make a seminar yeah. for us to right. it's, okay. nice. yeah. it's the same thing. Um, sometimes the generation gap does create a problem. Mm -hmm. So the young people do want somebody who's more of their yeah. age. Yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. it. And then um, regarding religion, it has to be embraced. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, as a, as a Muslim, I want somebody who embraces yes, it. Yeah. But then again, uh, a more related some person, mm -hmm. younger, and they understand our world, yeah. futsal. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a, a world for the boys mm -hmm. and, yes, and uh, yeah, the girls. Right. Maybe they want karaoke. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. what about the youth? Uh, youth participation in politics. How political do you think? Are they? Do you think it's enough? Do they actually care about what's happening? And um, for those who want to make a change and contribute, are they choosing the right platforms to do this? Are they doing anything about this, or are they just? talking about it so maybe Amy um. Um, for the youth uh, I think they expect somebody more approachable for them to voice out their opinion mm -hmm. so are and they actually you know participating in in politics and also in civil society yeah. in bringing up all their concerns their grievances to make it heard be heard are they doing this do you think in Kelantan are they fully aware of what's going on around them um, I think there's less of it that's like they don't have the awareness to voice out their their opinion on certain issues like the religion issues and then the social uh -huh. social social stuff so I think about they, awareness. They, they need, yeah, awareness there shouldn't be a problem because we yeah. have internet yeah I mean, it's right. not a problem in Kelantan internet yeah. mm -hmm. so as in awareness it's no problem so they are using all these mechanisms of these course. tools That's I mean engagement. An engagement of political parties to the young people Mm, I see a lot of younger generations involving in, in the um, political yes. arena. And they're taking part. Yeah, they so are. So they are taking part. Yeah. They are taking part. Okay. okay. Let's talk about, okay, we are, we are um, nearing the general election, right? Mm. You mentioned that you want candidates who are close to the people. And do you see this happening right in Glendon at the moment? Mm. They come and see and having a uh, call with seminar with us yes. okay they they ask uh, for 
giving us opportunities like okay related to my business mm -hmm. okay we need skill workers okay mm -hmm. we need talented skill workers so they provide us with the uh, training so you agree uh, that they so are listening. That they are doing they, they are, are doing the they are support us they have their own initiative to help us in mm -hmm. business I say moving forward for Kelantan, say in 5-10 years down the road, you have the uh, East Coast Economic Region coming in and then you have uh, recently 1.2 billion investments, 7 kilometers from Kota Baru, right? These are positive signs, but what more do you want? How do you see this, ex how can we, I mean, how do you foresee expediting the growth of Kelantan? Raisa? I think, um, again, it's marketing-wise, mm -hmm. people have a lot of misconception about Kelantan. Yes. I think we need a lot more exposure as to what we really are. I mean. Mm -hmm. The, the women in Kelantan are amazing. Yes. They can yes. live by themselves. Very skillful, very yeah. talented. Yeah. And we have ample business opportunities. We have uh, industries that we don't have in other states. Mm -hmm. So really, there's a lot of, well, you can see you can see pearls in Kelantan that are not being exposed. So come again. We need exposure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say that. Thank you very much for the three of you. This has been a really um, a woman empowerment uh, episode. Thank you also to Pradana Resort for allowing us to shoot the episode here. It has been a wonderful discussion and indeed an interesting one from a different angle, from a different perspective. And thank you all for watching. I'm Nadia Azmi. This is Cynthia Ng. Assalamualaikum and goodbye everybody. Mm -hmm.